changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Hallelujah. In the will of God, the best place you can be is in the will of God. Is there anybody who's determined I'm going to stay I'm going to stay in your will. There are things that are trying to push me out. There are circumstances that are trying to force me out of the will of God. But I've got a strong determination this morning that I'm going to stay. Anybody in agreement with me this morning? I'm going to stay in the will of God. I'm going to stay in the will of God. Amen. Bless his name. Get your Bible. And uh, we Thank God. Come on, let's praise God for these brothers this morning, y'all. Amen. Amen. The, the lady praise team members are having a little break today, and the brothers said we're going to step in and handle the business. Amen. They handled it, didn't they? Come on, let's give them another hand. Praise God. Thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Get, if you will, a little more monitor. Get, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Second Corinthians chapter number 4. And let's go down to verse number 16. Verse number 16. Father, we bless you this morning. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to corporately come together to worship. Thank you, Father, for the breath that you've given us, the life that you've extended. Thank you for just being able to now share a word. God, I pray now that you move me out of the way. As always, God, I depend upon you. Speak, Holy Spirit. For we are your children and we are ready to hear what the Spirit has to say. Minister God, even now I pray. And God, don't let us just be here on Mother's Day. But let us have ears to hear, heart to receive, a will to do. That we would not just be merely hearers of the word but we would in fact be doers of the word. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm reading from the New King James Version, 2 Corinthians chapter number four. Go to 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory while we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal that 17th verse again says for our light affliction somebody say light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of 
glory. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? This morning with your prayers and certainly with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about she has gained weight. She has gained weight. Now, I usually get y'all to help me. <laughs> so will you turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor? I don't know what Bishop's trying this morning. But I'm going to help him talk about, I guess, she has gained weight. Turn to the other side or find somebody else behind you. Say neighbor, oh good neighbor, the bishop's going to talk about she has gained weight. I'm going to help him. What about you? You may be seated. There's a little story that it's moving about on the internet. Don't really know the origin or the author, but it says this, that, that when God created woman, he was working late on the sixth day. An angel came by and asked, why spend so much time on her? The Lord answered, have you seen all the specifications I have to meet to shape her? She must function in all kinds of situations. She must be able to embrace several kids at the same time. Have a hug that can heal anything from a bruised knee to a broken heart. She must do all this with only two hands. She cures herself when sick and can work 18 hours a day. The angel was impressed. Just two hands? Impossible. And this is the standard model. The angel came closer and touched the woman. But you've made her so soft, Lord. She is soft, said the Lord, but I have made her strong. You can't imagine what she can endure and overcome. Can, can she think, the angel asked. And the Lord answered, not only can she think, she can reason and negotiate. The angel touched her cheeks. Lord, it seems this creation is leaking. You have put too many burdens on her. She is not leaking. It is a tear, the Lord corrected the angel. What's it for, asked the angel. The Lord said tears are her way of expressing her grief, her doubts, her love, her loneliness, her suffering, and her pride. This made a big impression uh, on the angel. And, and he said, Lord, you are a genius. You, you thought of everything. A woman is indeed marvelous. Lord, the Lord said, indeed, she is. She has the strength that amazes a man. She can handle trouble and carry heavy burdens. She holds happiness, love, and opinions. She smiles when she feels like screaming. She sings when she feels like crying. Cries when happy and laughs when afraid. She fights for what she believes in. Her love is unconditional. Her heart is broken when a next of kin or a friend dies, but she finds strength to get on with life. The angel asks, so she is a perfect being. The Lord replied, no, she has just one drawback. She often forgets what she is worth. Can we celebrate women this morning? Can we celebrate mothers this morning? She often forgets her worth. 
she has great worth, amen, and she has great value for Proverbs 31 and 10 says, who can find a virtuous woman? Her worth is far above rubies. And, and we understand the burden of motherhood is, is there. And there is a, a seemingly a greater burden on the woman and mothers than there is on a man and a father. You could debate that. And, and, but we really have different roles. And therefore, uh, we can't say that one has more than the other. We do know that, uh, however, that, that she has great responsibility responsibilities. She's the one who carries and births the children. She uh, is the one that uh, when given birth, sometimes she's almost very close to death. She is the first nurturer of children and, and she has had to go alone if the father was not around. And she has had to press forward uh, in gifts and abilities and, uh, in a male-dominated uh, culture. And she's been challenged by equal pay and, and equal work issues and, and all of this. And this is God's uh, creation. And while it appears that uh, there is such a joy and burden of women and mothers... The burden is not necessarily greater than the man. It is one that requires women to press forward in situations that, that God did not plan for them. But thank God this morning for strong and spirit-filled women who have carried the family, especially in the African-American experience. The, uh, she has great power. Somebody say amen. God made them fine like wine, and, and they're strong and smart. They, uh, they are shapely and, and contoured as, a, as an hourglass. And, and can I tell you that it doesn't matter if she's a size 3, a size 8, a size uh, 12, or a size 26. She is still fine like wine, and she still has a shape like an hourglass. She uh, is still real woman, and thank God. I got some brothers who can say, thank God for this creation. Come on, somebody. God filled them with the Holy Ghost and, and fire and, and abilities, and, and they are phenomenal. And, and, and you wonder sometimes, how in the world does she do it? She gained weight. Since last Mother's Day, some of the women in here have gained weight. Some of the women in here right now need to gain some weight. I decree this morning that by Mother's Day next year, many more women will gain some weight. Now, now, gaining weight is the last thing that a woman came to church on Mother's Day to hear about. Huh? Come on. The, the, Gaining weight is the last thing that, uh, that a woman wants to talk about. Don't, uh, they, they don't want to give you their age and what else? They don't want to give you their weight. Why, Bishop, are you uh, talking about gaining weight? I'm trying to lose weight. Huh? I'm trying to do all I can uh, to lose weight. Well, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, relax, relax, relax. I'm not talking about weight in pounds. I, I, I'm not talking about weight. Uh, on a scale, rather I'm talking about weight that causes you to be able to walk in victory. I'm talking about weight uh, that causes you to be able to persevere in power. I'm talking about weight that causes you to stand under great challenges. And I declare this morning in the 28 years that I've been pastoring here at this church, I have seen women and I have seen mothers stand strong under pressure and pain and heartache and disappointment that they could have, uh, uh, they could have only done it as a result of the fact that they had gained some weight. I wish I had somebody in here. 
Now, now we, we've seen some women and we've seen some mothers face similar situations and not walk in victory because they had not gained enough weight. I wish I could get somebody here today. I'm talking about the weight of glory. Oh, come on and help me in here. Yeah, I'm talking about the weight of glory. Glory, when you talk about the glory. We think about God and his essence and his glory. And in the Old Testament, it comes uh, from a word in Hebrew called kabod. It, it's talking about weight as in heaviness and, and quantity of brilliance and honor. We're, we're speaking of worth and value, the manifestation of God's presence as perceived by human beings. That's what uh, kind of weight we're talking about. The heavens declare uh, his glory and, and we see his heaviness uh, all over the world, his imprint everywhere. And, and so when we look at our text this morning, uh, this is Paul the apostle and, and he is giving a word of validation for being uh, uh, committed to who one is in Jesus Christ. Understanding that there, uh, there is an evil spirit and there are forces of the devil that work against those who are walking in the grace of God. That no matter what your role is, no matter what your assignment is, you might be a, a five-fold leader, you might be an apostle or a prophet or evangelist or a pastor or a teacher, you, you might be uh, in some area of ministry, a men's ministry, a women's ministry, evangelism, wherever it is that you are serving, uh, or you might just be walking in your role as a man of God and a woman of God, but there is always an evil force uh, that will work against you because you are walking in the grace of God. Paul uh, in the text reminds all of us that we have uh, the ministry of Christ in us. Is that right? When you go back to chapter number four and you look at verse number one, he says, therefore, since we have this ministry, uh, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not the time to lose heart. You got ministry in you. You got a calling on you. You've got responsibility in your life. God is counting on you. He says, he says that we don't lose heart. He said, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, uh, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. You see, what was happening is uh, they were questioning the sincerity uh, and the validity of Paul's ministry and uh, Paul had uh, been changed from Saul to Paul and uh, uh, he had to make sure that they understood uh, uh, that he had been changed and, and sometimes people don't take seriously your ministry and who you are even as a woman even as a mother uh, even as a leader or even as a worshiper whatever it is they will remember you for who you used to be and, and Paul says you got to understand I got a ministry on the inside of me and I'm not about to play games and, and, and I've renounced the hidden things of shame I'm not walking in craftiness I'm not handling the word of God deceitfully he said but I'm making sure and then he said in verse 3 but even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled to those who are perishing and so he was debating with them, trying to get them to understand that, and that he had a great responsibility and a calling on his life. And, and he was not playing around. He was serious about what God was saying. And he said, I'm not going to lose heart just because you are questioning who I am. Come on, somebody, we got we to gotta grow up and, and we got to put on our big boy pants and big girl pants. And just because somebody comes against you, speaks against you, looks at you funny, uh, you, that's not the time for you to lose heart. You got to understand that what God has assigned in your life must come forth. Somebody said, must come forth. I don't have time to play with it. I don't have time to josh around with it. He says, listen, over in verse uh, 5, he says, we don't even preach ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord, and we are servants for Jesus' sake. 
And then he goes on down and uh, verse number seven, he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, glory to God, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Oh my God. I could shout right there because it lets me know that I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm cracked I'm frail, come on, I'm dusty, I'm earthy. He said, because that's just how God operates. He'll grab an old vessel, an old jar that's cracked up, and, and an old jar that's been through hell and high water. He'll take a cracked up jar that's not perfect, and he'll fill it with the Holy Ghost. He'll fill it with ministry. He'll fill it with assignment. I wish I had somebody. And mothers, he's taking you. You've been through some things, some storms, some trials, and some tests. But he has put greatness on the inside of you. Don't, don't let anybody fool you now. He says, but we have this treasure. Somebody say, I've got treasure in me. I've got treasure in me, he said, so that the power may be of God and not of ourselves. Oh, my God. Thank God uh, that we don't have to worry about the power being of us. And, and so he says, he says, we are these uh, clay jars and we got great treasure and, and we got the light of the knowledge of the glory of God that is on the inside of us. Isn't that something? When you, when, when you juxtapose here, you got an you got, uh, old broken, no good piece of clay on one hand and then you got priceless gospel ministry on the other hand and God will cause them to collaborate. Come on, somebody. I'm not doing what I'm doing because I'm perfect. I'm not doing what I'm doing because I've been good all my life. I'm doing what I'm doing because God reached way down and said, I'm going to collaborate with you and I'm going to use you for my glory. I'm going to put something down on the inside of you that's going to help change the lives of other people. And you're going to know that it is not you, but it is the excellency of who I am. It's the glory. I wish I had somebody in here. It's the glory that's on the inside. And so Paul understood uh, that uh, especially during those times, they were being persecuted. They were coming hard after the church. And listen, we're living in a day now where there's religious persecution. People are being killed right in their places of worship. Maybe not so much here in America. We've seen some incidences, but there are places in the world where they are literally being gunned down and bombed and all of that just to worship God. And, and sometimes you go through things that when you are fulfilling your assignment, whether it's a mother, a woman, a wife, sometimes you get discouraged. Amen, sisters? Am I talking to the right house? Sometimes you get frustrated. Huh? And, and so uh, you can even almost feel like giving up sometimes. But Paul says, listen, I want you to understand something. In verse number 8, he says, listen, we are hard pressed on every side. Huh? Come on, women. Does that sound like anything you've been through? Huh? You've been hard pressed on every side. Come on, you've been going through some things that, uh, that would try to overcome you and, and uh, try to take you out. You, you've been trying to be a mother, the burden of being a wife, the burden of being a woman, and, and, and all the things that come with it and, and, and how sometimes you're taken for granted. Isn't that right? People just think you do what you do. Isn't that right, sisters? Huh? I, I think I ought to be able to get one or two of you to at least agree with me. Am I talking? Now, we can talk about something else. I'm trying to help. Huh? Sisters? You taking for granted? Cook, clean. Huh? You know? That's the, the Aja Lee woman. Do I have to remind you? Huh? Do you remember her? We take her for granted sometimes, brothers. And sometimes they feel hard pressed. And he says, but listen, even though we are hard pressed, he says, we are not Crush. I wish I could encourage a mother this morning. Uh, some mother came in here this morning hard-pressed. You came in this morning and you've had some issues all week. 
You came in this morning and you came with your hat on. You came with your smile on. You came saying it's happy Mother's Day. But the reality is really deep down inside, uh, you got some loneliness and some depression and some grief. And there's some things that you're trying to make sure that the family doesn't know about. That they don't see this. But the reality is that you've been caring. And, and, and nobody knows you go to work and you come home. You love the family. You love the children. You do what you do in ministry and wherever. But the truth is that, that you've been hard pressed uh, but Paul says because you got the treasure in you make sure that even though you get hard pressed sometimes he said don't be crushed tell your neighbor say don't be crushed don't be crushed no, 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 don't be crushed. There's something that's trying to crush you. There's something that's trying to pressure you to give up. There's something that's trying to afflict you uh, and cause you trouble uh, psychologically, emotionally, physically. But Paul says that you cannot give up. And then he goes on and he says that, that we are perplexed. Huh? He said we are perplexed sometimes that uh, you feel a little confusion. Uh, sometimes you uh, feel a little discouragement because of afflictions and because of trouble, uh, because of trying uh, to take care of the family, sometimes by yourself and uh, not getting assistance from uh, a father or uh, uh, trying to deal with all of the pressures on the job and trying to carry your responsibility in the community. Sometimes you're perplexed and you're con confused, but he says, do not despair. Tell your neighbor, do not despair. Huh? He says, do not despair. Uh, you got to understand uh, uh, that despair means lacking hope. Can I encourage a sister this morning? As a matter of fact, look at a sister and say, be encouraged right now in the name of Jesus. Don't you be discouraged. You got the hope that's in God and you got to keep looking to God because he is the one. You got to understand that, uh, that even though Paul and his uh, team were deeply troubled at times. They never gave up because they had a great treasure. I just came to encourage somebody today. Don't you give up. You got great treasure in you. You got the gospel and the glory of God in you. You cannot give up. And then he says in verse 9 we are persecuted but not forsaken. Oh my God. Come on, anybody ever felt like you've been persecuted? That the devil is chasing hard after you? He's wanting to take your life. He's trying to take you up. Uh, to be persecuted means to be hunted down. To be chased by others. And, and, and sometimes you feel it in your spirit. Sometimes you feel it in your health. And sometimes it feels like, my God, even your own family is persecuting you. Am I right? Sometimes it's the job that seems like it's persecuting you. All you're doing is trying to carry your responsibility. And it seems that there's always somebody on the job coming against you. Uh, but I want to tell you here that Paul says, even though you feel persecuted, you are not forsaken. Uh, in other words, God promised that, lo, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Anybody standing on that promise this morning? And then he goes on and he says that uh, even though uh, we are struck down, we are not destroyed. Somebody praise God for that. You think about a wrestler being struck down, you know. Uh, you, you see the wrestlers or the boxers. I like to watch MMA. And, and sometimes, boy, they're going at it really hard. And, and you'll see one, uh, they'll give it a, a lick and he hits the floor. And then they go, you know, into their wrestling mode and all that stuff. And, and before you know it, uh, the one that got struck down will, will, will get out of one of those uh, clinches and, and spring back to the mat and get up on his feet. Uh, because even though I was struck down, I was not destroyed. I want to thank God for the women this morning. You've been struck down since last Mother's Day. You've been pushed on. You've been pushed down. There have been some things that have struck you down. There have been some, some of you have gone through some sickness. Some of you have gone through some financial trouble. Some of you have been praying over your children. Some of you have had stress in a marriage. Somebody has somebody to walk out on you and it 
looks like you were hit the mat. You were down on the mat. And listen, they, they counted you out. They, uh, they, they, they were ready to, to count you out. And they, they started uh, hitting the mat. And the enemy was sitting there looking at you. And he said, uh-huh, you've been praying. Uh, you've been fasting. You've been believing. And look what's happened to you. He said, I threw something on you this time. And, and I knocked you down. Uh, but you look back up at the devil. And you said, yes, I've been struck down. But I am not destroyed. I wish I had. Because I got great glory that's on the inside of me. And he goes on and he says, you carry about uh, always. He says uh, in verse 10, carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. And then he goes on. I, I love when he gets down to, to verse number 16. He says, therefore, all the things he's been saying up to this point, he begins to sum it up and he says, therefore, he says, we do not lose heart. Can I get a sanctified woman to say, no, I don't lose heart. Okay, can I get, can, can I get an attitude woman to say, I don't lose heart. Where, where are you this morning? Huh? Can I get a sister to stand with this sister and say, no, we don't lose heart. No, 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 I'm talking about my strong, powerful women. I'm talking about my anointed women who, who stand boldly. No, come on, we don't lose heart. Look, as a matter of fact, uh, point and encourage three women around you, sisters who are standing, and say, no, we don't lose heart. Uh-uh, I'm not about to give this thing up. I'm not losing heart. No, I've come too far. I've come too far. I've been through too much. I, I, I've invested too much. I, 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 and he said, therefore, we do not lose heart. He says, he said, even though our outward man is perishing even though I'm going through some things I've had some hits I've had some disease I, I've had some attacks and, and he said even though our outward man is perishing he said yet the inward man is being renewed day by day oh my god See, Paul, Paul deals here with the dichotomy here, and he looks at the outer. He says, even though the outer is decaying, and it is, this outer body, this shell is decaying. Every day we get new grace and mercy, uh, and we bless God for it, but it still means that there's more decay happening to this shell. He says that uh, we're being decayed. It, it's trying to be destroyed. We've been going through the challenges of life. Uh, you've been going through uh, the challenges of motherhood. And uh, we understand that motherhood can be uh, stressful and filled with anxiety and, and all the things that happen outwardly. You, you're exposed to temptation. You're exposed to danger. You're exposed to decay. He said all of that stuff is happening on the outside of you. But remember now, he said we're still not going to lose heart all right why he said I'm gonna give you the reason because even though the outward and even those negativity all those things that are negative and those things that are opposing you are in reality he says you got to remember now the inward man is being renewed day by day come on somebody God said I didn't, I'm not gonna leave you out like that I know that you've been hit. I know that there are attacks. And, and, and I know that, 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 that culturally uh, you've been oppressed in many instances. He said, but I want you to know uh, that you got an inner man that's being renewed day by day. Huh? Isn't that right? You got, you got a new self that's being renewed. I thought about a scripture here over in Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 10 says, and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. You being renewed, tell your neighbor, you being renewed right now. See, see the inner is renewed through daily communication with the Lord. You're, you're strengthened with might. You are progressing in that which has the greater impact and meaning. All right? Yeah, you, you're made stronger by trusting in God. You're learning to trust him in all things. 
You're learning to endure hardness like a good soldier. Despite what you have and will experience externally, your inner self has the power in Christ to triumph over whatever you've gone through. My God, case after case, um, that's what mother and that's what women have done uh, throughout the years. The blessed women who went through a whole lot of things, but uh, they, they use who they were as godly women to persevere. Come on, you remember Hannah. Hannah was a woman who was barren. She could not have a child, and she desired a child. She said, God, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And, and, and her counterpart uh, would harass her and, and pick on her because she couldn't give uh, her husband uh, a, a son. And, and uh, the other wife had children and Hannah didn't have any children. She was going through and it looked like she was not going to succeed. But, but one day after she had been worshiping and after she had been praying and after she had continued to believe. So you got the whole fast to your profession of faith knowing that the one who who promise is able to perform it. Isn't that right? Hannah said, I might be barren right now, but I got a promise from God. And the Bible said that one day she knew her husband and they conceived and she birthed a son called Samuel and he became a prophet. She gave him back to the Lord because she was a strong woman. And, and I think about all the women, the women, uh, that woman whose husband left her in debt over in 2 Kings. You remember her, don't you? And the Bible tells us that she had to be a strong woman. Her husband suddenly died and left them in debt and she didn't know what to, to do and, and because the creditor would come and take her sons and put them in the slavery right? and she was trying to watch out for her sons and, and the Bible said that, that she went to the prophet and the prophet told her to gather all the containers she had and whatever oil she had to begin to pour uh, into the containers and keep on pouring as long as she had an empty container and the Bible Bible says when the oil because she had no more containers the oil stopped and the prophet said now go and sell it and she sold it and got out of debt and had something left over somebody tell me about the perseverance of a strong woman a strong mother come on somebody you remember now uh, that uh, uh, how is the inner uh, man uh, progressively transformed uh, it is by the word of wisdom isn't that right the wisdom of God. You understand Proverbs 16 and 20 says, Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers and blessed uh, is the one who trusts in the Lord. So we, our inner is uh, progressively transformed by the word of wisdom from God and is uh, transformed by the righteousness of God. Uh, for Colossians 3 and 12 says, Clothe yourself with compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And then you got to make sure that you're putting on holiness for the Bible says without holiness no man can see the Lord. Now, so then, as, as uh, uh, tough as it is and as tough as it may be to look past what you are currently experiencing, because look, at, look sister, I'm not, I, I'm not taking it lightly. Some of you are going through some hard times. No, some of you are really dealing with some struggles. Some of you are still dealing with some guilt from your past. Some of you are dealing with some stuff you did since you've been saved that you promised the Lord you weren't going to do and, and it's troubling you. Some of you are dealing with financial issues. Some of you are dealing with hard-headed and wayward children and some of you are, are, are frustrated and aggravated. And, and, but Paul says, he says, I need for you to see beyond this and see it even though it's real, uh, even though it hurts. I want you to see beyond this moment. Is that what he said? Go back to the text. Go back to the text. Second uh, Corinthians chapter number four. He says, he says for in verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. I know you say, no, this is not light. He said, this is for your light affliction. Tell somebody you're going through what you're going through is a light affliction. He said, it's just for a moment. Huh? He says, it's just for a moment. It hurts. I'm frustrated, but it's just for a moment. He says, for uh, it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight 
of glory. Oh, my God. He said, you're going to see it as, as, as a moment, and the unseen is the eternal. He says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Somebody needs to shift their perspective and their outlook this morning. Tell your neighbor, you've been looking the wrong way. He says, he said, Paul compares what you go through in this body as momentary when it's compared to what uh, the external, uh, the experience of God is going to be, the eternal experience with God. The reason you can join Paul, mothers and women, uh, is because you have gained weight. Oh, my God. He says, he says in verse 17, he says, for our light affliction which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's the weight I'm getting at right there. Somebody say, yes, I've gained some weight. Now he said, that's why, that's why uh, uh, on this Mother's Day, uh, you can look at the things that, that are seen and, and you can look beyond those things to see the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are just momentary things. They are just light afflictions. He says when you compare them to eternity. So the glory that is God's uh, exceeds everything else that you're going through. He says you got to understand you got to rely on the weight of God that's on the inside of you. God produces eternal glory when he allows you to go through trials and to go through tests. Uh, Acts chapter number 14 and verse 22 says, strengthening the souls of the disciples, he says, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. Can I encourage somebody? Don't be discouraged because when you enter the kingdom of God, the enemy comes against you. And you enter into the kingdom and because of the struggle between good and evil, God and the devil, when you come into the kingdom, you're going to experience some challenges. But all you got to do is understand that you got the weight of glory on the inside of you. You got to recognize that, uh, that, that Paul said uh, over in Ephesians, uh, the third chapter, uh, in the 20th verse he says now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you're able to ask or think according to the power that is at work in us and understand this morning because uh, Christianity often produces some painful experiences the question is raised then why do we want to go through this and, and why uh, pay attention to the earthly rather than the heavenly? Why uh, go through and look at the temporal rather than the eternal? What I want to tell somebody this morning that it's time that we are in this moment against the backdrop of forever. And that's why he can say it's a light affliction. Don't get so caught up uh, in the earthly things. And for the Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures are on earth but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth or rust cannot corrupt and understand this morning uh, women and mothers I just stop to encourage you don't lose heart because you have gained some weight yeah uh, it doesn't matter I'm not talking about your pounds on the scale I'm talking about the weight of glory I'm talking about the heaviness of God inside of you. I'm talking about the one that's pushing you, the one that's encouraging you, the one that is reminding you that you can conquer anything. You need to allow more of the glory of God to fill your life. You uh, need to allow God's glory more access and power in your life. And in the manner of the way that you live. And in the manner that you handle the situations of life. Those who have gained weight in glory are going to handle the various issues. You need this weight to be able to face every level of motherhood. You need this weight in order 
uh, to handle every level of womanhood that's possible. And so I stopped to raise the question this morning, how in the world did Big Mama do it? How in the world did women and mothers do it? How in the world did Aunt Gert do it? How in the world uh, did Mother Johnson do it? Well, it was because they gained weight. Yeah, I'm not talking about any kind of weight, uh, uh, but they ate and digested and they meditated on the word of God. You remember Mary, she ate the word of God when the angel came and said, you are going to have uh, this baby named Jesus. And she said, nevertheless, at thy word, tell a woman, say, you got to get the word inside of you. Um, how did big mama do it? She worshiped the Lord. Lord. She yielded to the Holy Spirit. She emptied herself of her old habits uh, and her old lifestyle. You remember the woman at the well when Jesus encountered this woman uh, whenever he gave a revelation of who he was because he understood who she was. The Bible says she dropped her water pots uh, and she ran to tell everybody, come see a man who told me all about myself. Uh, how did the women of old do it they trusted God by faith you remember the woman with the issue of blood she said if I can just touch the hem of his garment she said I believe I'll be made whole how did grandmama do it my God those grandmothers who were in slavery our great great grandmothers who were in post slavery how in the world did they do it with a white baby on on the left breast uh, and her own baby on the right breast uh, it was because she had gained weight uh, she said I'm going to look to the hills uh, from whence cometh my help uh, because all my help comes from the Lord she had gained some weight uh, uh, how in the world will the women and the mothers uh, encounter and prevail today over the enemy that's going on right now you need to gain some weight of glory look at a woman and say it's time for you to gain weight yeah it's the way to beat misogyny uh, it's you gotta gain some weight if you're going to survive discrimination you gotta gain some weight uh, if you're going to be the one uh, who's been walked out on you better gain some weight uh, you can't get this weight uh, in the mall uh, you gotta get this weight at the altar uh, you can't switch and shake uh, to get this weight uh, but you gotta uh, uh, make sure uh, that you surrender to the power of God you can't eat physical food you can't eat tofu and sushi and steak uh, in order to gain this weight uh, but you gotta come over to where the table of the Lord is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on you can't worry about your weight in pounds you better be be concerned about your weight in glory. Uh, don't be concerned over all the weight in gold and in rubies and in diamonds. But but what is my weight in glory? Uh, come on, girlfriend. You got to gain some weight. Uh, come on, sister. You got to gain some weight. Uh, I know you cute and all, but it's time to gain some weight. Uh, if you're going, uh, if you've been falling apart uh, over situations uh, look at somebody and say gain some weight if the enemy is pushing you uh, uh, to have deaf thoughts, uh, it's time to gain some weight. I wish I had somebody in here. If the enemy has been uh, uh, talking about you uh, and taking you through hell, it's time to gain some weight. Uh, stop focusing so much on mundane earthly things and set your affection on things above and not on things below where Christ is seated. Uh, I wish a woman this morning 
morning will say, I got to gain some weight. When the enemy comes back, he's going to see a different mother. He's going to see a different woman. Why? Because I've gained some weight. Too much has been paid for the weight plan. I know Jenny Craig has a weight plan. I know Nutrisystem has a weight plan. I know Weight Watchers has a weight plan. I know that uh, all those uh, have weight plans and all of them cost to gain and lose weight. But I'm talking about a plan that's going to help you gain some weight. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, it's a prepaid plan. Uh, how much is it going to cost me, uh, Bishop, if I gain this weight? Well, I'm so glad you asked uh, because it's not going to cost you anything, but it costs the father and it costs the son. It costs the son his life and it costs the father his son. And that's why mama said, Jesus paid it all and all to him I owe sin had left the crimson stain but he washed it whiter than snow is there anybody in here that will half have a sister and say if you're running scared it's time to gain weight if the devil's been on your trail it's time to gain weight it's time to understand that I gotta wait in glory and nothing by any means can conquer me uh, come on sisters those with power get on your feet and get an attitude have I have another sister and say sister come on we gotta toughen it up we gotta stand when you've done all you know to do to stand stand anyhow you got greatness on the inside of you God worked overtime to bake you. God created you fearfully and wonderfully. God put shapes and contours on you, but he didn't just make you just to be a cutie pie. He made you to be able to speak to mountains, and mountains will have to obey. He made you to be able to lay your hands on your baby and speak over your children. He made you to be able to stand no matter who walked out on me, no no matter who left me standing I got Jesus on my side and I'm running for my life can I get about 25 women who will shout I've gained weight if you've been struggling gain weight if you got a habit gain weight if you're discouraged gain weight I'm so glad that Jesus died so you could get this weight are you glad this morning that Jesus died so you could get this weight it's crazy to some people but it was because of Jesus that we we're able to have the weight of glory they put him in a borrowed tomb he laid there Friday night he laid there Saturday night but early Sunday morning he got up out of the grave all powers in my hand he did it for you sister he did it for you mother he did it for you woman I don't care what your mistakes have been put your trust in God and gain weight open yourself up and say I've got a gain I got a gain I got a gain I've gained some weight that's how I've been able to get through it. You wonder why you ask me how? It's because I gained some weight. I used to get pushed around. I used to fall apart. I used to cry and run and pull out my hair. But now I got, I've got weight and I stand. Come on, sister. Am I talking to you? Huh? Come on. That's how grandmama did it. She had the weight of glory. She, she understood that, that, that we are not defeated. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's happening. We will not lose heart. I came to encourage some woman this morning, don't lose heart. Don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. You're great and mighty. He spent overtime on the sixth day creating you special, beautiful, unique, soft, tender, Oh, come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? Don't you worry about what size your suit is. Don't worry about what size your dress is. Don't be trying to get in something somebody else. You say, listen, I'm worried about my weight and glory. You can't, you can't go to the scale and get your weight and glory. You, 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 got, you, you got to say, God, 
I'm open, pour into me everything I need because I'm, I'm, even though my outward is perishing, my inward is being renewed every day. High five your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm, I'm all right with that weight. I'm all right with that weight. Oh, is that what he's saying? I'm all right with that. I need this kind of weight. Some of you have been crying, frustrated over the same situation. I decree that this time next year you're going to gain some weight. You're going to be able to stand against some stuff that you didn't think you were able to stand against. You got a power. Listen, you're of God, little children. And you have overcome the world for greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Everybody's standing. She gained some weight. And it's all right. Somebody come on, some sister shout, and it's all right. I need this kind of weight. And listen, go on and throw your weight around. Go on and throw your weight. When the devil comes in, go on and throw your weight around. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God said, I'm going to raise up a standard. Throw your weight around. Say, no, devil, you, you got to get out of this house now. I've been whining. <laughs> Falling apart. God said, no, you, you gained some weight. How, how, maybe there's some sisters in here that need to gain some weight this morning. You've been in the fight of your life. You've been in trials and tribulations and situations. You've been, the enemy is accusing you, telling you you're nothing. I thought you were saved. Reminding you of your old self. Reminding you of things that you once did. And then Paul says, listen, we have this ministry in us. You got the ministry of motherhood. You got the uh, ministry of womanhood. Being wives, leaders, grandmothers, aunts. You got that ministry. And you're handling it according to the Lord. And Paul says, be encouraged. That even though you got these things that are happening outwardly, internally, I'm renewing you. That's why you can keep moving through it. That's why you can keep going. Sometimes you didn't even realize you had the power you had. It's because you gained that weight. You became bigger in God. And the more you yield yourself to him, the more he feels and takes control of every situation. I thought I was going to lose it all. But because of the weight gain, Dr. Jesus said, don't worry about this weight. I know your other doctor's talking to you about the other stuff, but Jesus said, don't worry about this weight. I want you to be hefty in me. Because I'm, I'm, my glory is heavy. My glory is, is, is weighty. And I just want to just pray over mothers. Just lift your hand right where you are. Women. We don't know what it is like to be a woman. We don't know your challenges. We can sense them. We can see them. Sometimes they are produced by us as the men. Sons. Fathers. And so we have to... Repent even today, men, that in many instances we've been the originators of the pain. We've been at the root of the frustration. So we repent before God. And Father, for these women, some are not as strong as others, but Father, help them to gain weight. Help them to, 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 to put their trust in you. Thank you, God, for their education, their intellect, for their positions that you're giving them. But, Father, without this weight, they can't persevere. Thank you, God, for those who have withstood the storms and the tests of time. Thank you, God, for those who have been able 
through prayer and fasting and supplication made their request known unto you and they have your peace that surpasses all understanding father i pray right now for these women some are getting ready to gain weight some got they, they've been trying to make it on their cuteness some have been trying to make it on the locks of their hair some have been trying to make it god by the shapes of their hips some have tried to manipulate and control and do witchcraft in order to achieve but god let them know all they got to do is gain weight the weight of glory looking past the temporal things to the eternal looking past the things that are seen to the things that are unseen that's greater and so father i pray right now that as they continue and contend with life that you empower them with greatness god beyond their imagination and let them gain more and more let them be big in you and let them celebrate not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for that mother right now that's in pain. I pray for that mother that's in guilt, God. I pray for that mother that's been abused sexually. That woman, God, that has experienced rape. I pray for that woman, Father, that, 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 that was abused, God, and misused, and, and, and all those things, God. And they've been trying to get past it. They've been trying to go forward. They've been trying to worship. Some, God, have such a poor esteem. God, I pray right now you raise it up. Help them. All they have to do is gain weight in you. Remind them of who they are, Father. Remind them of how special you have created them. Some are going through grief. They've experienced great loss. God, lift the burden. Let them cast it on you because you care for them. And we will honor you. We praise you. Father, I decree right now that there's some women who made up their mind today. I'm getting ready to gain more weight. I'm getting into the word. I'm going to begin reading more. I'm going to begin praying more. I'm going to walk in who I am. No matter if I don't have a friend in the world, I've got Jesus and the glory. And I'm in the majority. Help them to take authority in their life. Help them to walk uprightly in victory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God praise. Give God praise. If you're here this morning and you want to connect with the church, you need to connect with Jesus Christ. If you're here and you have never connected with Christ, if you're here and you say, I'm saved, but I need a church family, or if you're here this morning and you say, I need a change, I pray, Father, that there be one, two, three, twenty who may have never accepted you as Lord, touch their hearts now. Let them know that all they have to do is confess and acknowledge their sinful state and, and receive you and the life you gave. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch those who are in transition looking for a, a connection. God, they've heard you. You've pushed them. Then help them to be obedient today. And then, Father, there's one that, or two or three that says, I've been living this same life and I need change. I can't make it through my addictions and all those things. I need change. I pray, Father, that when we end this prayer, that if they're here and they fall in one of those three categories, that they would come and make their way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.